Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. Hello, this is Nate Newton. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know what show this is. It's the Dub Network. Let me tell you something. I'm excited. I got one of my boys in here. I ain't going to say he's my friend, but the dude's starting to rub off on me, man. Isaiah's not here today. My professional guy who leads me through all of this and don't let me go off the rails. And I'm hoping this guy keep me off the rails because, I mean, keep me on the rails because this guy I'm finna introduce, hey, he's my producer back at the Cowboys. And I, the reason I brought this guy in is because he's a true Cowboy fan, like Nate knew. You know, I'm the third most exhilarating Cowboy fan. It's Mr. Jones, it's Michael Irvin, and then it's Nate. And then it's maybe number four right here, the guy, uh, Caden Gates. I mean, but he's not going to talk right now because I want to say thank you to a special sponsor and then once I get this special sponsor out, oh, let me tell you something. He's with us. This sponsor's been with us for two years now, and he just re-upped, and it's Niagara Plumbing. And now Kyle, excuse me, I'm calling this dude Kyle. I get it mixed up with another guy. But Caden, let me tell you why these people are special. Niagara Plumbing. You know they have a toilet. They're, they're toilets. They they specialize in toilets. Just say yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get you. Kate, just say yeah. Okay, but these toilets are water saving toilets. Water will sneak up on you, so that's pretty smart. <laughs> water, water sneak. But anyway, you can flush, and it uses only the proper amount. I don't know how they get this done, and I would like to use their toilet. I would like for them to come put a few in my house because I'm bigger than most, so you may, I may have. Yeah, you may have a bigger a, extra one. <laughs> yeah, so I want to see yeah. how these work. But anyway, thank you, Niagara. Thank you for being with us the second year. Thank you, Niagara Plumbing. If y'all have some toilet needs or need new toilets or you want to save water and save money, call Niagara. Now, back to my guest, my star, and uh. I don't know how I call this dude Kyle when I know he's Caden Gates. Kyle is the other guy. He'll be on later. But this is Caden Gates, the producer of all the shows I do for the Cowboys. He's going to tell you who he is, what he does, and how I'm connected to him. Let's go, Caden Gates. Well, thank you, Nate, first <laughs> of all, for bringing me on here. Yes. Uh, I've been with the Cowboys. I'm the media producer for them. I've been mm -hmm. with the team for six years, and I've been producing shows with you Probably four of those six years. Okay. Um, and what's two funny, of those years? He was I. Uh, I was just an editor. I was. I was. What's funny is I was first brought on to be like a uh, an editor, go shoot like an event or something right. like that. But then you know, stuff happens. That's the one thing about <laughs> our industry is you know you never know what turns will come. And after my first year, uh, they needed a producer to step right. up, uh, like literally during training camp wow and so i stepped up into that role and i've been doing it ever since um i was very lucky that i get to call you my coworker, friend and talent how many shows okay we do the pregame show yep. uh, we do the post game how many shows do you do in a week and tell us some of the name of these shows well another that show you do. we do is special edition yes which has been a legendary show going on a long time it's changed throughout the years like when i first started right. up um I had a show called Cover Four that right. was every single day. Throughout the week, you know, I'll do, uh, we have a show called Hit Sticks, which okay. is basically Isaiah and Barry breaking down the game, but through Madden. So you kind of get it. Does Kyle view. be involved in Kyle's that? Kyle's the host okay, of that. Okay, Almost okay. every show I do, Kyle's the host. <laughs> right, so, right, so right. If I don't name Kyle, right. it's not because I'm not trying to avoid him. He, yeah. he, Kyle's associated with almost everything okay. I do. All right. I probably do throughout the week, I'd probably say up to. 15 to 20 different shows and some of them are hour longs and then others are just 
30 second little hits that you see at a gas station when you're pumping your car, you know, just a little. What's the one that I do? Uh, is it the, Kyle Cow- does the fuel stop? Yeah, he does the fuel stop. You'll do Cowboys this morning. Well, yeah, yeah. Cowboys so if you morning. ever see me, this is the guy that produces it. Now, let me, I'm trying to see how I want to attack you because I knew this kid. Uh, he knew me. Oh, yeah. Before I knew him. Yeah. And he's going to tell you a story. Look right into that. Look and tell that story. Don't look at me. Tell that story of, of how I've known you or you've known me all your life. So, well, obviously I've known you because I've been a Cowboys fan since birth and brainwashed into it. But my dad has seen you twice. He's made sure to tell me the stories because my dad was a huge Cowboys fan. I'm talking he was a fan when y'all were 1 in 15, rocking the, you know, the jersey, did not care. So it's been brainwashed into me ever since. Right. Um, but he... He told me two stories. Uh, he played safety at UNT. And UNT? Come U- on. University of North Texas. Texas. Thank you. Denton, Texas. Ka. Right. Um, and Michael Irvin's brother played on the team. Yes. And so Michael Irvin decided to come with the game. He decided to bring his great teammate, Nate Newton, with him. And he, my dad's just a freshman redshirt out there, and he's just looking at his right and, He's having to contain himself because two of his favorite players on his favorite team, <laughs> Nate Newton and Michael Irvin, are just right. standing there right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then another time, he would see all a lot. He it was in the off season when he was still at school. He would work for this valet company, and this valet company did Deion Sanders Club. Yes. And he, Prime Time was the name of the club. Yeah, prime Time. <laughs> and my dad was like. Nate had this awesome Chevy Suburban. Yes. Uh, and he was like trying to park that thing. He was like, you get a little bit because it was kind of big and everything in those tight parking spots. Let me explain it. I had this uh, deal where, it, and and I knew these people at this, uh, that redo inside of, and I had that thing. I took the middle seats out, re carpeted it, put the music in, banging. Oh, I was a young, oh, yeah, your dad, when I pulled up, I probably had been, you know, uh, doing the wrong thing and couldn't get it parked. <laughs> so your, your pops probably helped me out. He probably did a few yeah. times. And what's funny is he would always, he would save the spots next to y'all available. Right. And customers would come in and be like, well, can I park in that spot? Oh, that's for the that's for the prime people. That's for the <laughs> players and everything. But if you want to pay an extra fifty dollars, we right. can have your car right next to Nate Newton's. Right, oh, right, right. fifty dollars straight out going right to him. Before, wow. Before we go into that, I just want to set up. You said I was a Cowboys fan, and yeah. I it's changed a little bit working for the team because you have to not be, you can't lose right. your brain, or you have to still think. Okay. How did this game work and everything so I can tell Nate and all the guys what stories I want to talk about? Because growing up, I would get in trouble after the Cowboys lost. Right, right. I'd how would go, that be? I'd go, oh, my entire life. Right. And so how would you get in trouble? What are some of the things you I would turn the TV off as soon as the game was over because I don't want to hear post-game shows. I don't want to hear why my Dallas Cowboys suck. I just saw it. I don't want to hear wow. it. Wow. And so then, how old are you? Oh, uh, from the age of 8 till probably 16, so 17. How old are you now? I am 29. Who? Wow, so you just recently got over that tangent. Uh, yeah, well, as soon as you start working with the Cowboys, you kind of realize you, you got to grow up a little bit yes. and do it. But, yeah, I, I have never – the last time the Cowboys were in the NFC Championship game in the Super Bowl, I think I was one or two years old. So I've okay. never experienced anything past the divisional round. So my Cowboys fandom has been a little bit tough compared to most people uh, – that you bring on this show. Wow, wow. This is Caden Gates uh, here with Nate Newton, and we're missing uh, Isaiah, the, the Greek warrior Zeus, and uh, Standback. But uh, let me tell you something. This dude, he knows his business. Uh, and, and I just want to just touch a little bit deeper. What does it take? And I know you can't be very technical, but what does it take just to put on the least of a show? Just what, how, what hours do you spend to make sure that these shows come out as perfect as they do? So what's funny is when I first started into this, um, I was like, okay, I want to go hardcore. I don't want to do these debate shows first take and all that. Right, like, right. I want to be like true. Let's truly show them how we're going to be. So we're going to talk about this topic, this topic, this topic. Right. The more I've done this, the more my job is to set up the talent to shine. Right. So that's why, Nate, you call me all the time, and right. we'll talk more. And so off not the Cowboys and everything, right. and from that, I can kind of visualize, okay, how can I set Nate up in the best position to talk about the offensive line versus defensive right. lines where it doesn't go over the heads of every single fan, but the still right. hardcore fans can understand. So my right. job is more of 
it's hard work in the fact of I have to think of storylines for every single game. Right. And sometimes, I mean, how many times have we heard, oh, how much do we need to feed Zeke right. versus Tony Paul? <laughs> right, right, you know, right, right, right. So you have to think of a creative way to still bring that topic up because it is important for the game, but in a different way. Right. And one thing that's great about our team, I've been in places, it's not even with, TV, you know, right. work or anywhere where you don't get along with coworkers and it's kind of hard to get the right. job done. Right. That is one thing I, you can, it's so easy to tell on TV that you, Kyle, Nate, and Barry, right. not only all respect each other, but love working together. You got a young lady. Oh yeah. Haley Sutton. I yes, apologize. Yes, that's our new I, addition. Haley, she yes. is great. She, she is, is great. No, she is yes. perfect for the role. She fits in perfectly. It's the last puzzle piece, but, uh, I know I kind of went all over the no, place there. It, but when you putting the show together, when you, do you take it home trying to put it together? Do you come? Yeah. So or do you just say, when I leave the job, it's over? Uh, no, it's, I wish I could. Um, <laughs> but one thing, uh, when I go home, I can kind of think a bit. You know, uh, like I'm more of, I need it to be quiet around me so right. I can kind of think. Now, I'll get ideas every now and then. And one thing I do is I'll be... I'm not trying to brag. I oh, I beat everybody in there, but I'll go in a little bit early to where it's a little bit quiet. He never morning. beats me, so don't even oh, worry about it. Oh, I do beat it. you. I do beat you. Don't be lying, Nate. Who was here first this morning? Uh, I met you in the parking okay. lot. I, we walked who in was together. Waiting on who? I was waiting no, on you, homie. You were, you, I, I opened the door, and you opened the door at the same time. You ain't lying to these fans. I saw you pull up. Yes. In your black truck. You didn't know who I was yes, I, in Nate, my black I know, truck. Nate, I know your truck. Okay. That thing is massive. All right, all right well... How many hours? Is it 30 hours a week that you spend on just doing all your shows? So it depends. Special edition, is that thing's to a formula. That right. thing is bam, bam. I can get that done in my sleep. Right. Pre-game is an hour-long show, no breaks. So how so long you did got, you put into that? Maybe a couple of hours, three hours trying to put... Depends on the matchup. Like right. that Green Bay if game... It's against Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia doesn't take that much. Right, right. Because Philly, all the storylines are there. It's right. pretty simple. Now, when you're playing the Houston Texans, and no, yes. now we sh that's the thing, that's what's funny. We get onto the team about overlooking yeah. the Texans, but me and you are like, <laughs> oh, this is, you know, yeah. what, what do we talk about here? Uh, Houston Texans, you gotta think, okay, what the heck do we talk about? What matchups, you know, and everything. So that one will take me a little bit longer to right. fully figure out. So I may go home and I'm just sitting there thinking, you know what I mean? And sometimes some of the best ideas don't come from me. Like okay. uh, Isaiah had the idea of doing a Jeopardy style game. Right. And I was like, okay, I don't want to copy Jeopardy because I've seen that. But we changed it into a Santa Claus idea of right. what gifts would Santa Claus right, bring right. for the team? What do they need? And so it's, the main thing is, is as much as I'm the producer, it's my show. It's not that. Right. It is our show. Right. If, if we, if the show doesn't do well, it's my fault. Right. The show does well when like it's all like of ours. quarterback? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say I'm a quarterback because then right. all you know what I mean. <laughs> but let me say this right now. I, I just wanted y'all. I probably overdid it a little bit just trying to get it out of him. But you know, he's there for us. Caden Gates does a super job of making sure that we're out front. Uh, it, he makes it all about us, and he makes our segments that we do on these shows that we're uh, that we feel good about it, and that we have we set uh, responsibility for how it goes, even though it falls on his shoulders. But man, I, I need to move on. We yeah. we know about you. You're 29 years old. You're Caden Gase. Your pop used to hang out with me when I was a, a younger guy. I'm 61 now, so this is a kid to me. I mean, I can be his granddad. But anyway, I ain't. Yes, y'all can see. Uh, difference here but anyway just a little <laughs> just 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 a but little anyway there. i want to talk about the cowboys last yeah but i want you to give me an overview of this past super bowl so what this past super bowl taught me is we can go into analytics we can go on this stuff and be like okay here's how you break down the game yes and at the end of the day it comes down to the main things it's the easiest thing in the world don't turn over the ball. Thank you. Don't turn over the ball. And if you have the best quarterback, <laughs> you have a shot. That's that's all. I mean, the, look, Andy Reid is amazing head coach. He gave right. that team. He's able to do it. If you have a, the, one of the best head coaches and one of the best quarterbacks and you don't turn over the ball, you have a shot to win any game. Even if the – you can't tell me after watching that game, the Eagles roster is better than the Chiefs. It is better. They had three things better – than Philadelphia, Kansas City. They had a quarterback, 
They had the coach, and they had a tight end. Yep. Everything else, Philly won. I fully agree. And what's funny is Goddard played the, a hell of a Ooh. game, though. I know they, I know Kelsey's better. I'm not trying to say But Goddard stepped up big for them. The difference in that game, Philly could have blown away and gotten away with that game. But that fumble yes. was – that got that kept Kansas City in it. That kept Kansas City in it. And most people want to talk about the the, the so called holding at the end. I don't ride with that. Yeah, I, I ride with. I knew I saw seven points go off of off of a mistake. Yep. Seven points. Just think if you would have not fumbled, even though it was a freaky fumble, if you would have not fumbled. And you would have went out and at least got three. That would have put you up by three. Yeah. At least by it, four. It would have put you up by, uh, I think they were up, and I could be wrong, I think they were up a touchdown. Yeah. Because that tied the game. So if, yes. you, if you end up scoring on that drive, and all the Philly drives, I know they had some big bombs, but right. they were running the ball with Hurts, they, driving they down, had way taking time. time. Possession. Oh, yes. At the end of the game, they had 35 minutes. Yes. Over 400 yards of offense. And they still lost the game because of that one. Turn over, and, and no sacks. Yep, no sacks. Now, they were getting some pressure on Mahomes, uh, but nothing like that, the holding play. Right. They got pressure on Mahomes on that yes. play, but getting them down is big because the incompletion versus the sack, that's another thing. It's, it's going back to Parcells. That, I learned football. I listened yeah. to Parcells a lot, and Parcells yeah. was talking about, I'll take incompletion over a sack any day. Right, right. It, it's just... What what bothers me is, and, and this is just me because I know you can't go as deep as I can go, and I'm and I'm not going to be disrespectful, but you have always heard me from the beginning of the year, people. I'm telling you something. From the first interception, I tell people, he who values the football. He who possesses the football, who holds it dearly to their heart, normally wins the game. I, I, I went back and did some research on, on Hurts. Only, uh, what, eight, six interceptions. Yeah. He had a few fumbles during the season, but he didn't lose any. No, the only fumble he lost was in the big game. In the big <laughs> game. And so I, I am telling you, people, and that's why... When we get into the Cowboys, I will talk extensively about uh, about the young Dak. You remember when Tom Brady went against uh, the young the young uh, Yeah, the, the, whoever had the less turnovers won the game. Yeah, you can have I, if you, if you tell Troy Aikman, hey Troy, you're going to throw for two hundred yards. You're going to have two touchdowns passing, and they're going to be short. And you're gonna have, but but Emmitt's gonna have three touchdowns, and you win the game. Troy would be like, "Where do I sign up?" Oh yeah. And your quarterback, and I'm not saying Dak don't feel this way, but this Norv Turner preached that to Troy. When we walk off the field, no matter what it looked like, we want to win the game. I mean, that's the the one playoff loss that everyone remembers is '94, and that's when Troy turned it that he. He turned the ball over twice, yes, yes. and he got away from it. I yeah. mean, and would y'all still should have come back and won that game. Dion, yeah, yeah, De- yeah. Dion you, you turned the TV point. off. Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> I I was one at right, the time, right. so, so you didn't crawl over no, there. I don't okay. think I had the ability yet. I would have. I <laughs> yeah. would have after the game right, if I right, would have. Right, but right. my point is, is y'all were the perfect example of y'all didn't turn the ball over. That's right. Y'all possessed time. That's why. Every game day, Nate's yelling at the entire crew about time of possession, time of possession, time of possession. Well, that's how he won three Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. To take With advantage a great of it. defense in the, But so I went to Choctaw. Uh, I had an appearance at Choctaw, the casino. You know, that's a beautiful place. For those that enjoy that, that is a beautiful place. I, I'm not, you know, like I told people, I'm not that guy. Uh, that, that 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 you know gets involved. The gambler. Yeah, I'm not a gambler. So, but for those that love it, they have great food. They have uh, great entertainment. You know, my wife loves it. And, you know, she loves that stuff. But anyway, uh, and I we had over 500 people. Me and Darren Woodson was in there. 
uh, entertaining, meeting and greeting and just talking. And I told him, I got on the mic, I said, and I told him everything. I, we got, Kansas City got three things better than Philly. So I'm picking Philly to win uh, based off of that. But I forgot who is the better team. But I told him, I say, one thing, if Kansas City win, that's because y'all have the best quarterback in the league. And everybody kind of looked at me. You picking? I said, yeah, but they have the best quarterback in the league. And for Coach Andy Reeves to come out in the second half and say, you know what? I'm not going to let you hurt my quarterback. Yeah. I'm finna run the ball. Oh, Pacheco is going to be yeah. – th that's the only – thing that no one's ever going to talk about they're going to give all the credit to Mahomes, and he deserves yes. it he deserves yes. it but pacheco in that third quarter mm -hmm. ran the ball yeah they, they i think the drive started they did a play action yes screen right but after that it was run 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 and that changes the defense alignments that, like okay i can't go just straight to court they could right. run it down my throat and it wasn't just these Two yard gains. He would get hit two yards and he'd break through. Yeah. He took some shots too. Guard some shots. Guard yeah. shots and got and, him. And, and then to come towards in the game and for your quarterback to take off for fifteen yards. Yes, with a, a run, not a throw. A run with a bum ankle too. Yeah, bum yeah. Ankle. It didn't look like it looked like that. Anderson was working real well at that shot again. <laughs> but this is one of the best Super Bowls. I've seen in a very, very long time because we knew that the Kansas City Chiefs was not going to let us down. The question was, how was the Philadelphia Eagles going to play? Yeah. And, man, this kid uh, raised this stock. Oh, uh, this best yeah. game by his, in his career. He saved yeah, his best Jay, game for the last yeah. game. And both running and passing. Yes. I mean, some of those throws – I, Tremendous. I mean, that Tremendous. it's it makes I was Nate called me before, I think it was like two weeks ago, and he asked me, Where's Jalen in your top ten? I was like, he's outside of it. Right. And he's like, Okay, name your top ten then. And right. I started listening. I was like, Oh crap. Right, right. You probably have six quarterbacks that those are the top six, and probably seven to fourteen, seven to sixteen. You know what? I'm I'm, I'm gonna stop you there, Caden. What I've I've talked to Zeus was Isaiah. There's four quarterbacks, and then everybody, and then there's a separation. Yep. And then there's another four. Yep. And Mahomes, Burroughs, uh, John Wick, which is Aaron Rodgers, who would be that fourth guy? I would say Josh Allen. Josh Allen. And then, even though Herbert is so talented, he brings that next group of guys. Yeah. Which is... Uh, him, Jalen, uh, Dak, who else? Uh, it depends on how you feel about Lamar. Lamar. I would yeah. say Lamar's and so, up there. And then there's another big separation. Yeah. And so do you agree? Uh, you can line up however you want, but is that four guys that's right and then four, a separation? See, I think that I think you have the top four, and then I think that next group, because it just depends, because the top four will get you in the game every game. Right, right. They won't really lose it for you, but – I hate saying it, but Kirk Cousins, Dak, all those guys yeah. you just listed, we've seen them lose games that's and we've I'm seen saying. them win games. They're in that second so, level. So that's what I'm saying. But I think there's more than just four in that second level. I oh. think I think the division from four to five and below is way vast. More, It's more vast than we've seen in a long time in yes. this league. Yes. The quarterback play is not as good. I, I think it is. I think it is. I think it is with the emergence of these guys, these four that we talked about, because yeah. before they came, it was terrible. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it was it was Tom and it was Aaron. And I agree it was, with uh, that. The guy Stafford, but he would like you say he fits into that. that I guess I'm more tier. meaning like the drift. Yeah. From, yes, your top four, you're got yeah. some great talent up there. But what's funny is one thing we noticed: you really only have one guy in the NFC that you listed in there. And yeah. that guy, Aaron Rodgers, could soon go to the AFC. Right, that which right. means, okay, Jalen, NFC. Okay, I'll give you right. that. But the NFC is so wide open, which is what hurts this year about the Cowboys, is that yeah. the NFC, you're one and guy that you listed. straight to the Cowboys right now. This is our yeah. segue into it. The NFC was so wide open because the one guy you listed with uh, Aaron Rodgers yeah. wasn't in the playoffs, didn't make right. it. That's right. So, uh, I'm 
I'm failing here because I want to say Dak was the only guy. No, Dak and Kirk Cousins, I want to say, were the only guys to win a playoff game in the NFC when the playoffs started. Dak won one more. Kirk didn't. Jalen, that's what's so frustrating is the Eagles respect them. They got themselves the number one seed. Was that the easiest playoffs for them? You played but a they, Giants team. But they earned it. They did. They earned it. See, and, and that's what I, I – we always can look at, and that's the Cowboy in us. We can always look at, man, that was, if the Cowboys would have had that easy role. Well, you know what? If you are to beat the Texans, if you are to beat Green Bay. Yeah, the, the, the Jaguars. The, yeah, you could have been – that easy road. Yep. But you chose not to go that easy road. You wanted to go the hard road. But what I want to jump into right now is uh, free agency. Okay. The Cowboys has maybe 15 guys that are restricted or free. And uh, we're not going to go into deep details because uh, Kyle Yeomans is a part of our draft show and if you want to get more details on that, you know, you can, what's this, is this called? Draft it's show? literally called the draft show. It's called show. the draft show. So you, you can get more, but we're going to talk about our free agents yeah. and what we keep them. And we're not going to be long because unlike Caden, he has to uh, deal with these guys on an everyday basis. Yeah. So he can't ask them. You, he can't be as critical as I may be because you can't ask the guy, hey, man, I need you to do this in-depth interview. And, uh, and like, ain't you the guy that told me I should have been not, not on the team? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a very hard line. But right. I think we can talk about, like, the Want biggest. Go offense, defense. Yeah, I would say offense first. The biggest question teams? to me is what they do with Tony Pollard. And I think we agree with this and the fact that I wouldn't mind tagging him because I don't think he has much wear and tear what on his body. What you gonna tag him for? Because what I'm saying is I don't think his agent's What's gonna agree. What's the tag number? The tag's gonna be ten. But here's oh, but but here's the here's why I say this: his agents aren't gonna agree to me to anything less than four years. So I'd rather do a one year than do four years. That's okay. me personally. Yeah, two and two years would be look great. At the, look at the great. running backs that have been in the previous Super Bowls. There've been a variety. Oh yeah. It ain't been no just no one guy. Yeah. It's been a variety. Yeah. And even though Tony is explosive, if I'm management, I'm finding out a way that we can do these four years, and we're not gonna overpay. If you, can, you can't that's great. go down the same road every year. I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Wow, you make my you make my throat dry. This too hurt. Me. I just I just don't see a way that that was your most explosive player this year. Yes, CD, it was. CD yes, Lamb it. had some great plays, but when you needed the an explosive yeah. play, Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard probably won you the Cincinnati game with his right. huge run because right. Rush had a great drive at the end, but besides, it was mostly. Pollard. Right. Pollard had some great runs against uh, the Rams. Huge run. And then people forget his performance against the Vikings was outstanding. Was amazing. Right. And so I just... But he got a serious break there. Yeah, he does. Now, I his, think... His body is explosive. He's quick twitch muscles, everything about him. Even the little band he wears around his neck is a quick twitch. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you sure? Well, I'm Are just... You, I, 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 I mean, that's just, me, I would make sure you have a four-year contract that's maybe three or four this year, four the next year, maybe four the next year. I, I'm not paying him more than five, six million dollars. See, I don't think that's not that's, at one time. It's great to say that. I don't think that okay. people would accept. I, I, yeah. Hey, if I can control it, yes, that's what I offer him. I, I don't think he accepts it. Okay. Okay. So I'm saying. Depending on price, yeah, he he stays or goes. You saying tag him and just don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm just saying I don't. If he <clears throat> if he accepts your offer, great. I'm all on board. Right. I just don't think him and his team will accept that offer. Okay. Uh, the next big one is: Do you want to go O line or do you want to go tight end? Wherever you want to go, who okay. you think let's go, most let, important let's free go, agents? Okay, let's go O line because you have two people that started games. So you have Jason Peters. You have Connor McGovern. You know, Jason Peters, no. There's no way in the world. He tapped out on us during the, during the game. There's no way, man. You bring back a guy 41, 42 years old. No, no, no. 
uh, Conor McGovern, give him a fair offer. He is, he, whether you like him or not, he's a hard worker. He didn't give up a whole lot this year. Yes, against the elite tackles, he wasn't the best, but he's a bulldog and he fought. So, if, uh, once again, if you can be compatible with your prices, maybe he'll give you a discount if you can be compatible, if you just don't totally disrespect him. Let me ask you this. A few years ago, we were talking about offensive line, and you told me you only knew two great pillars. Right. You only need two. That's right. Yeah, I Another believe that. Another three can be just fill in guys. Fill in guys, work hard so, guys, go do, get them guys. Do you have those two pillars on this team right now? You don't. That's why at that position, offensive line, I think you have to go out and get a guy. I don't care if he's a tackle, a center, or a guard. You go out and get a guy because your left tackle, the young Smith, has proven that he can play either either or. So it don't matter what you get. You go out and you get a guy that you know can flat out play. Yeah. And then we'll deal with uh, with Steele when he gets back because I don't think he'll be a hundred percent when I he think, gets back. I think from what I heard, he's gonna be it's gonna be close to training camp, but at the same time they're. Every team in the league is optimistic. Oh, he'll be back by then. And then when he's not, I'll say this. They said the same thing about Tyron Smith, and he did. He did come back right when they said. Now, he wasn't the same player, but, you know, um, let's go. Let me say, no, before we go, let me me, me tell you all about Steele. This is what we better understand. Now, you hear me saying this, right? I hear you. You, This is what we better understand about Steele. He is a dominant run player. Single blocking and deuce blocking, that's with help from the guard. He is a, a ferocious, but now he's only an average pass blocker. Yeah, I was going to say. How will this affect the passing game? So keep your eye on steel. And now I admit, I'm a bit, <clears throat> I'm going everywhere here, but after seeing Michael Gallup, and I get wide receiver and offensive line are totally different positions, but no, I'm, it's not. I'm, it's the same. I'm Stop completely cutting. worried about. Yeah. Coming off ACL. Because we saw yeah. how much that affected Michael Gallup. Now you're telling your right Lyle tackle. Lyle Collins. Yeah, how much Lyle it, Collins. Yes. yes that perp, thank you. That's yeah. a perfect example. Yeah. Um, go to tight end. Dalton Schultz. You tagged him last year. I think. Bye. Okay. You, 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 if you give him more than $3 million, you're giving him too much. You have seen t- what a... $10 million tight end look like we played all the top tight ends. And when you say, I'm going to pay you $10 million a year, you you have to make the catches that yeah. Garda made, that uh, the kid for the 49ers made, Kittle, and, that, yeah. and that this kid that just made for Kelsey. the – Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree he's not in that top tier. I do think the injury to Dak hurt Dalton Schultz in the beginning. Okay, how I, much? No, I'm, I'm not saying – look – I'm in that realm right there. Because right. I do, I've done stuff with Dalton. Dalton's a great guy and everything. Yes, uh-huh. He is amazing. Mm-hmm. My one question would be are you ready to lean on Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot or a rookie? Because right now, the Cowboys already don't have enough weapons on offense. We've talked about that. So are you okay with losing one of the guys Dak trusts? That's my only argument to people that want to get rid of At, Schultz. For more than $6 million, yes. Okay. For more than, if we got to pay him more than $6 million, yes. Yes, Zach. That we, this is the price you pay when you pay your quarterback. He is the Band-Aid fixer. Yes. Uh, there's some other guys on offense. Actually, Terrence Steele is a restricted free agent. Don't so worry about it. So technically, but I think he's going to be back. Like, we can go to the defense now. Leighton Van Der Esch. You pay him a, uh, you pay him a nice salary. I don't know what it is for linebackers. What's the going rate? You know, if it's if it's eight mil a year, you give him six because he lines people up. He knows what to do, and he showed improvement last year. Oh yeah. And people say, "Well, his neck, his neck, his neck." Uh, until the other two young guys, Cox and the other guy, Clark, Clark until they yeah. show who they are. See that. The run game took a big hit when yeah. LVE went out. Yeah. And so, I get yes. it. LVE has had injury issues and everything. But with what they're doing with Micah, they're putting Micah D in. Now, me and you both yeah. think that Micah should be linebacker more. But yeah. as long as you got him there, you have to have a good linebacker. That's right. And he's the best one on this team by a long shot. Bar none. Bar none. That's right. Okay. 
Other guys, this one's a tricky one. Mm-hmm. Anthony Brown. I think he's the most underrated player on the team, but he's coming off a torn ACL. Man, I'd be rubbing his knee if my Mr. Jones I, and Steven, I'd be rubbing his knee and Will and come on back for a little bit less. We found out lack of corner play. Y'all mm-hmm. thought, okay, ah, we don't need Anthony Brown. Yo, we need every guy that can possibly cover. He's he, he's an above average guy. He knows what to do, and if he come back off of that, you got to find a way to keep him. Yeah, you know. And I'm not, but now if it's come come time of overpaying, no, I'm I'm out of the overpaying business. My but, question would be yeah. one: What do they view for Deron Bland? Do they want to move Deron Bland back inside and have him? Now you got Jay Lou too. Now yeah, yeah, that's my art. Do you yeah. want him to have him compete with Jay Lou there, or do you want to move him on the outside? And two. This corn, this draft is full of corners in the first. I think this first round is going to have five. Cowboys have been burnt before, <laughs> yeah. thinking that oh, one of the corners will fall to us, right? And they didn't. So that's this team is very good about covering holes before going in the draft. So I wouldn't, I would be surprised if Anthony Brown wasn't on this team next year. Okay, uh, one other, or two more, man. Let me know. Other guys. Okay, this is. I think this is a personal favorite. I think they're bringing him back, but I just want to get your opinion because I know you love talking about him. Donovan Wilson. Oh yeah, this is one guy. You, you, oh, he can't cover well, but when you ask him to, he does. Oh, he he hit, but he gonna get penalties. Well, he didn't get a lot of penalties, but he's gonna separate you from that ball. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be he's the X factor out of all the DBs. He is the X factor that can help you change a game. If you improve on your defensive line, his stock goes up. Every time you improve up front, a guy like him gets better. You know, he's not the best secondary, like the best like drop back and cover guy, but he's the guy. There's momentum swings. There's yes. everything, and when he lays a hit, yeah, wakes people up. And I get like when you're just on a board and you're just doing paper, and you're like, oh, why does that? Emotion is huge in the yes. game of football, and right. one of his hits can change it. Uh, last one I'll do for you is the guy they traded for halfway through the year, Jonathan Hankins, big boy. They have to keep him. They have to keep him because you have no other run guy up front. You have nobody that want to eat bacon. You have no pork getters. You have no beef eaters. He is the guy. And, and if he doesn't do it, we, we if he didn't show up for the playoffs, we would be in trouble. We will be in trouble because our other two guys have not played well. They've got my friend Leon let out of here because they have not played well. And you can say, well, the coach should inspire them. But, God, Lee, I pay you all this money to inspire yourself. No, but anyway. I, I fully agree with that. If yeah. you just look at the difference whenever, again, it's the Le- Leighton Van Der Esch argument. When he got injured, the run defense was yes. struggling big yes. time. I think that's one thing me and you have talked about on the side. Look, in the NFL, you can't pay big money to all the positions. you got to decide yeah, which right. ones. And they've decided that they aren't going to pay big money to defensive tackle, and it costs them. Ron Payne bit. is out there at $19.4 million, and they don't, no. they don't want to pay him, but that's okay. But <sighs> Caden, I had an over and under in my mind how many times I would call you this other guy. And I only messed up once, so I'm proud of myself. Yeah, you did in the beginning. So, so <laughs> you threw an interception in the first quarter, but after that... I don't, I don't do that. And I didn't even talk about that. I'm going to wait because I don't want to put the pressure on him. I'm going to wait that Zeus get back, Isaiah stand back. You know, but I want to say this right here. They need... And I'm going to let you comment real quickly. What do we need to do to help Dak? I think you have to add other weapons. And part of it... Look, Gallup being injured last year... Mm-hmm. He wasn't the same player. So right. Gallup is going to be better next year. Right. He, he will be better. Right. But I think they need to get another weapon for him. Okay. Look, I like Jalen Hurts. Right. My question to people is if you put Jalen Hurts on this team, obviously he's got the run ability, but he doesn't right. have the same weapons. Right. Dak, yeah. this was probably the second to worst tep, uh, weapons Dak has had around them. You have to give talent to uh, your quarterback. The second tier quarterbacks. The second tier quarterbacks. All right. Well, you heard it from Caden Gates. Well, let me tell you something. I think he spoke from the heart as best he can. Y'all know I'm Nate Newton. Uh, sent, sitting there for Isaiah Stanback and uh, Nate Newton, Caden Gates, Viagra Plumbing, 
Man, I can't wait till y'all come to my house and put it in. I need to save water, but I don't know how big as I am. Maybe you can. You need a Hall of Fame one. Get him a Hall of Fame edition. <laughs> okay. Hall of Fame edition <laughs> toilet you. for Nate. Thank you, Kate. Hey, until next time, we flush one down the drain. Have a good day. Dub Network, let me tell you something. Ta-ta. 